Stories from the Storm is a project of the Houston Flood Museum in partnership with Houston Public Media and is supported by Houston Endowment. Visit HoustonFloodMuseum.org. Melissa, you and I were connected through phone um, and spoke for a lot of hours during the aftermath of Harvey. And this is the first time we are meeting in person. In person. Yeah. <laughs> and it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We are at the uh, former site of Search Homeless Shelter, which is now called Midtown Kitchen Collective. Uh, sitting in the room where at one point we had almost 200 volunteers who were making sandwiches, making tacos for Harvey Relief, feeding first responders and volunteers and people like that. So I have a friend from culinary school that contacted me and said there's a group of chefs in Houston and volunteers that have 2,000 servings of food, I think it was that day, that they're trying to get to Southeast Texas. Can you help get it distributed? And I yeah. think there were times once the National Guards got in contact with me, they would call and say, I need 500 hot meals for tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And I had no doubt that you guys could crank it out. Yeah. So I would either text you or call you and, oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it was just <laughs> so reassuring to know that I had them taken care of and you guys weren't gonna back out on us. And some of the information that you provided for us was like super valuable as we were moving forward and, and trying to figure out what to do. And then eventually sending product out for chefs to open up their own kitchens. Yeah, and that was, I didn't see that coming. I thought that for a couple of days there would be just hot food for the volunteers and the first responders. And I think I may have counted eight to 10,000 servings. Does that sound right to you? It has to have been more. More than that, yeah, I think yeah. so, yeah. In Southeast Texas, the food that was being delivered out and sent out to people was to residents that had already started tearing down their houses and everything. And we very quickly found out, I think the first day, that firefighters, policemen were snacking on little bags of Chex Mix yeah. and stuff like that. And they were the ones that were going out in chest deep water to make rescues for 12 hours at a time. That wasn't gonna work. Yeah. So when we made our first delivery out there to the Civic Center, I don't know how many firefighters were out there. I mean, they were so appreciative. I had a couple of the chiefs call me and just thank you so much. That food was so good. Not only did it feel good to eat a warm meal, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that was awesome because if they are not taken care of and if they're not fed, how are they going to take care of everybody else? Exactly. You know, we fed the National Guard till they were able to move out. They were headed to Florida. And just think about the amount of good that that did, being able to, you know, give them the ability to sustain themselves mm -hmm. and help rescue Thousands. countless people, probably. Yeah. 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 And it's all because y'all thought, okay, this is a group of people that if we don't feed them, they're not going to have the... That was you. I mean, you, I trusted <laughs> you. Um because our phone conversations were so positive and so good. And I didn't feel like I was talking to a stranger. I think it's interesting too that like, I feel so much more closely connected to your area of the state mm -hmm. than I think I would have ever had before yeah. this. I think when you realize that the impact of a disaster like that can be more than just what's in your front yard and that we could pull together as a community to help each other is kind of fascinating to me. And I think really quickly, that's what we in Southeast Texas figured out, and it kind of kept us from sinking in all this mess. I mean, literally, literally and figured, yeah. you know, I mean, this was not a one or two day thing no, that you guys were doing. I mean, yeah. this was a couple of weeks. I was gonna try to come out on one of the drop-off trips um, out to see it, but I couldn't because things just were getting more hectic. And I think at that time, it was really hard for us to figure out what to do. It took a couple days of like, while we would love to continue doing this and you know, forever. Right. Um, we understand <laughs> that we don't, aren't making any money. We have to be able to, you know, yeah. support ourselves. You know, we ended up getting in touch with a really great nonprofit who took it over. Y'all were there for long enough. I thank y'all oh. <laughs> on behalf of Southeast Texas because it was, I mean, that was. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. 
Well, I mean, let's be honest. It's always a team effort. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good team. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, it's gonna sound kind of crazy, but one of the coolest experiences in my life. I'll agree. I know that sounds crazy. I mean, no, it doesn't <laughs> sound crazy at all. I think there's things that we that happen in our lives that changed the way that we think, and like our group has become so close because not only did we spend 24 hours a day for 12 days together in this one room, mm. but we all realized that we value this type of community support and, mm -hmm. and utilizing your own personal resources, whether right. that's just time, which, mm -hmm. which it was for us, and our brains, I guess, mm -hmm. um, to help our neighbors. You know, like yeah. we, that was our common thread. By the end of the 12, 13 days, whatever, we did almost half a million meals, oh which was gosh. which was crazy. But <laughs> we knew in the middle of it that it was something that was important, especially mm -hmm. the fact that we were able to activate so much of the restaurant and food community mm -hmm. at a moment's notice that we developed a document that is kind of an ongoing guide on to how to activate your restaurant community in the time of a disaster, wow. what to do before and then what to do right when a disaster hits and then what to do in the long term. And, you know, we were able to use that document and send it to Puerto Rico when Maria hit. Really? We sent it to Napa. The mayor of Yontville, I guess, in Napa yeah. during the fires uh -huh. got it. And then we've been told that, that people all around the world are using our document as like a, as a template. It sounds silly, but the, Number one thing in that document is putting together a team of competent people that are wanting to do, who are doers basically, right. who aren't going to ask a bunch of questions or mm -hmm. try to be the boss or take over or anything, yeah. but just get it done. And, and, you know, we found that in the team that we had brought together here. I found that in you, we were just communicating, you know, like that we gotta we gotta do it yeah we gotta get it done i knew that you were gonna figure it out on your end and i knew that you would as well yeah <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> no it was it was terrifying and mm -hmm. horrible and beautiful all at the, all same, at the time. same time yeah yeah